Hi, I'm Jared Gardner, and I'm here today with Dr. Andrew Rosenberg, a bone pathologist. And uh, Dr. Rosenberg has uh, sat with me for several hours and made um, very nice lectures about bone histology and uh, embryology, as well as cartilage histology and embryology. And if you haven't seen those yet, be sure to check them out. I'll put links in the upper right-hand corner of this video and also in the video description below. And uh, Dr. Rosenberg also did a session where he looked at some unknown cartilage slides uh, from my teaching files and to talk about the ways that he differentiates enchondroma from low-grade chondrosarcoma and uh, also to contrast that with an example of an obvious, um, uh, more obvious higher-grade chondrosarcoma. So I I'll put that link down in the video description as well so you can check that out. Here we're going to talk about a different kind of chondrosarcoma, and this is called a secondary peripheral chondrosarcoma that's growing out on the surface of the bone rather than in the medullary space. And this is a, um, a really nice gross, um, a gross macroscopic uh, photograph. It's not the same tumor that we're about to look at microscopically, but it's a nice example to show uh, what the gross uh, findings are. And here you can see a large lobulated cartilage tumor here on the surface of the bone. And look right here in the center, the stalk that it's arising from. This area here that I've outlined, this is the pre-existing osteochondroma or exostosis as some people call them. And so here the chondrosarcoma has grown off of the surface, the cartilage cap of the osteochondroma. So this is just an example for you to visualize if you've never seen one of these before, what a secondary peripheral chondrosarcoma looks like grossly. And uh, we'll now take a look at, again, not this case, but another example of one of these tumors and hear Dr. Rosenberg's comments about the histologic findings. All of this represents evidence where you have cartilage in the middle of bone. And some people, sometimes people confuse this with infiltration. Cartilage in the middle of bone means that cartilage has acted, that surface has acted as a surface for the deposition of bone on it. And portions of it have undergone enchondrosification. So this is all that. We now have these large coalescing nodules of cartilage. I am still looking, I'm here seeing increased cellularity. When I look at the chondrocytes, again, to me, well, I look at the cellularity, most of the matrix is blue. I look at the nuclei. Um, here in the center is a chondrocyte nucleus. It doesn't show well on the projection, but under the microscope, it's not as hyperchromatic as the others, but it's still in an area that was relatively hypocellular. Boom, so this, let's see where we are. What am I saying? All right, so here's the, obviously, the underlying bone. This is the medullary cavity with bony trabeculae. This, here's cortex. Then we have this big nodule of cartilage that is undergoing enchondroossification as low as we go that looks like it's related to the surface of the bone. So I would be thinking that, to me, at this point, this looks like a component of cap of an osteochondroma undergoing enchondroossification. Then we have all these nodules of cartilage in the adjacent soft tissues. We have cartilage, hyaline cartilage, nodules delineated by thin fibrous septi areas of cartilage that have mineralized, areas that have undergone enchondroossification. So, again, here's the cortex, a lot of the cartilages associated with the surface. Um, trying to put this case together, I would wonder whether this is a large osteochondroma and then the question I have, is this a low-grade chondrosarcoma where you get these large nodules of hyaline cartilage delineated from one another by fibrous bands? And people use that morphological feature of slightly cellular hyaline cartilage as 
again, delineated by these fibrous bands extending into the soft tissues as evidence of the formation of a low-grade chondrosarcoma. This is a, a secondary, this is an exostosis of the pelvis. Yeah, that it's has growing. developed... Yes. And it's become a low-grade kind of sarcoma. That's correct. And so the areas that I would say are the benign is this, with enchondral ossification, the chondrosarc is this, these yeah. big nodules with uh, fibrous septi. And I assume you find the, the thickness of the cap to be one of the useful I features. I ignore it. I think that's also another long-standing misconception generated by radiologists. Um, the thickness of cartilage per se does mean nothing whether it has uh, metastatic uh, potential. The rule of thumb is the more pure highland cartilage you have, the more likely it's going to be a chondrosarcoma. But to use just thickness of a well-formed cartilaginous cap, say two centimeters, I don't say, oh, if it's two and a half centimeters, right. by definition, it's a chondrosarcoma. Yeah, I, I always thought you should have this lobular expansion into the yes. soft tissue, although sometimes I think it can be a little hard, depending on your section, to see and well, appreciate where the, encon or, I'm sorry, the osteochondroma ends in the chondrosarc begins. Yes, sometimes it can be difficult. It can be intermixed. That's why I like to look at my own growth specimens. Uh -huh. I like to be involved in taking the sections so I'm taking the sections in the plane of section that to I see, want yeah. to minimize confusion. That makes good sense. So I'm very hardcore with getting my hands dirty with specimens, cutting them on the bandsaw, et cetera, taking sections, and then looking at them under the microscope. Wow, this was awesome. Thank you again so sure, much. Sure, thank you.